Hey, so if you find these kind of videos useful, please let me know. I would love any kind of constructive criticism on this. We will hop into the actual edit itself here shortly, but um, I have gotten some requests to talk over my editing process. So that's what I did. This is gonna be an hour of me talking about what I am doing as I am editing a video. Uh, if you find my voice annoying, you are more than welcome to mute it and put your own music on in the background, but I, I did my best. <laughs> I did my best to talk about it. Um, doing stuff like this is really easy for me just because you know it's kind of low effort. I can just record my edit in the background and then talk over it um, afterwards. So I don't mind doing this. If you're hoping for something more structured, you know, like a full tips videos, I can, I can definitely do that. It just takes me more time to piece something like that together. Um, but yeah, I would love any feedback if you have any and enjoy. Hello, YouTube. Uh, this is Brandon, AKA the Wampus. Hope everybody's doing well. So this is another unedited edit. Um, I had some good feedback on the first one that I did. If you didn't see it, it's unlisted on my channel. I, I didn't end up posting it. It felt like a weird thing to publish for my YouTube page. So uh, this is another one of those videos. I had some good feedback on the last one and um, somebody asked me to do some commentary over it. Maybe talk about why I did some of the things that I did. So I'm gonna give that a shot. We're gonna see how it goes. I, I'm not exactly sure how we're gonna do that. You know, doing some of these videos take uh, a long time and I don't necessarily want to talk for hours on end. Um, side note, uh, what you're watching right now in the background is me going through some of the clips for the video that we're gonna be editing today. And I was just making some notes on the clip colors that I wanted for the video. Um, I don't know if there's like a standard way of organizing your clips or footage or anything like that or a best way of doing it, but um, I was just trying to make some quick colors so that I knew when I went to go actually piece the, the main video together, I, I would know what I was looking for. So anyways, um, as I was saying, I don't know how we're gonna do these videos. As I was thinking about it, it kind of made sense for me to maybe kind of structure it like a podcast, you know? Like it's maybe an hour to an hour and a half of me talking about the process that I went through for making videos and some of the things that I learned, some things that I'm struggling with, some things that I'm trying to learn. But I don't know, we'll figure it out. Um, but for right now, this is gonna be episode two of unedited edits. Um, this is going to be a vlog slash gameplay video that was sponsored by Call of Duty Mobile. And what you're watching right now is me going through and sorting the footage. Um, this trip was a really fun trip. Uh, Joe, who's on the screen right now in the white hat, uh, he flew myself and Josh, who's going to be behind the camera. He might not be in frame ever, but flew um, myself and Josh out to Charlotte and there was a Call of Duty event in Raleigh. So we flew out to not only attend the event, but also film Joe doing a couple things at the event. And one of the things that he was doing was um, a bit that was sponsored by Call of Duty Warzone Mobile. Mobile. Call of Duty Warzone Mobile. So yeah, um, I'm not sure if we're gonna do a second up video where we uh, show off more of the trip itself, but this video was the one that was required to post for um, Call of Duty, which is a good thing and a bad thing. It's great that Joe gets 
the opportunity to do these sorts of things and to post videos like this. But a lot of times when you go to post sponsored media, sponsored content, there are a lot of like really nitpicky things that you can and can't do. And it kind of, it'll come back later in this video that I, I realize I've made some mistakes or um, there's some things I have to change. So, um, yeah, so that, that's what this, this video is about. Um, it's kind of a hybrid type of things, hybrid type of video. I'm not sure if Joe pitched it or Call of Duty pitched it to Joe, but what they were looking for is for Joe to show off him at the event and then also show off the new game. And the video itself was limited to five to eight minutes. So um, what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to figure out what the hell I'm gonna do with the video. Because essentially what we have is um, a lot of video footage from the event that we're gonna have to condense down into I'm probably less than five minutes total vlog time just because we're gonna have to include gameplay as well. So the video is gonna be five to eight minutes long and it's gonna be a combination of Joe's trip as well as the gameplay. So um, it makes it challenging. It, it definitely makes it challenging. So what I'm doing right now is I'm scrubbing through this footage. Hey, there's me. What a, what a good looking guy. Is um, I'm looking for clips with Joe in them and I think I'm marking those blue. And then any clip where Joe is actually talking to the camera or you know you get some of Joe's voice and it's not just Joe in frame I think I marked those dark blue so yeah it looks like I'm marking hey there's T-Dog shout out T-Dog uh, looks like I'm marking clips that are just Joe in frame you know him walking around talking to people I'm marking those teal and then if I find a clip of him where he's actually talking uh, I think I'm like that dark blue so um, one of the things that I found that was challenging with this video is that we didn't actually get a lot of footage of Joe talking to the camera so it's kind of hard to build a narrative when you don't have a narrator if that makes sense so as I'm going through this, I'm trying to find some, just anything from him where he's talking to frame, where we can kind of build out a story of the day. Uh, Cause in my head, what I'm thinking is, I want to kind of encapsulate the event and have a nice segue into the gameplay and then lead out with the closing of the day. So that's what I'm thinking right now. Um, I'm still scrubbing through this footage I'm not sure if I'll show the entire process of me, process of me scrubbing through this footage. Um, the only other thing I think I'll probably say about this is some of the, I'm not sure how Josh shot this and I forgot to ask him, um, but you'll notice that a lot of the video files seem kind of flat. You know, it doesn't look like there's a lot of contrast or color in the video footage. Um, I think Josh shot in raw. And what that basically means is that the camera stores a lot more information than say your phone when, oh, it looks like I missed a part where we got Joe talking to the camera. So yeah, right here, I'm listening to what Joe's saying. Um, but when you see these kind of like flat profiles, oh, and here's gameplay. When you see those flat profiles, it normally means the, the, the footage, I think it's shot in raw or log, and in order to actually get that full color profile, you need to go back and 
grade your footage uh, and correct that. Uh, from my understanding, I guess color correction and color grading are two different things. I'm, <laughs> I'm still learning and figuring it out. So, <laughs> yeah. excuse me. Excuse me if I don't know um, too much about that sort of thing. Um, so it looks like I'm still a, man, what a good looking guy that is. I think in this video, yeah, I use this as the closer. <laughs> That's because you're like, you know what, man? I spent too damn long on this video for me to not get a little self promo. You can call it corny, but I was like, man, I'm putting myself in the video at some point. I, I don't care. Um, <laughs> I'll make it in there somewhere. So I doubt that this clip ended up being the, uh, the closing clip, and it looks like I'm pretty much done with sorting through the footage. And like I was saying, the thing that became difficult was me trying to figure out how to tell the story without Joe actually saying a lot. I, I think at some point I zoom out of the timeline and you can see that there's really not a lot of moments where Joe's talking to the camera. Uh, so this is some closing B-roll. Uh, this is towards the end of the event. Um, there was a, We had a lot of footage of Joe meeting fans and talking to fans and a lot of footage um, yeah, just a lot of, I guess, more B-roll type of footage, which is always good to have. Um, and I think moving forward, I, I talked to Josh about getting more of Joe uh, interacting and that sort of thing. But looks like we're at the end of the clips that we have. I'm not sure where I go from here. All right, so this is the timeline right here of the camera footage. And I tried something different for this video. I don't normally work on bigger projects. It's normally like a gameplay with an intro, right? So there's only a couple of video files that you really have to work with. So for this one, I made a separate timeline that just had all of the clips on it. I think if I had more videos, I would try to split up those videos into their own timeline. So say, you know, I had video files from day one or day two, or, you know, like it's a multiple day event or there's different scenes, et cetera, et cetera. I would try to split those up into their own timelines. But for this one, we just, uh, I just am using the separate timeline to have my mass repository of clips and um, I have a main timeline. This will be where I do the bulk of my editing. It looks like I found my opening clip. There's a sequence where Joe is joking with Shanice who was the, um, she is one of the representatives from Activision. She was super friendly and from my understanding, she is kind of the boss. She's head honcho, you don't mess with Shanice. Um, He's talking to Shanice and he is kind of joking about, um, you know, like, can I move my setup around? Like, all that kind of stuff. And I thought it was just a funny sequence to open with. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start subtitling the opener. Um, do I go to change the clips? Yeah, okay. So I wasn't sure if there was going to be a lot of dialogue throughout the video. So I gave Shanice's text color a different text color than Joe. That way, if I want to go ahead and use her subtitle later on, I can just grab that text node uh, and duplicate it. So right now what I'm doing is I am lining up the different text sequences with excuse me, the different subtitles with different things people are saying. Um, I think doing subtitles is my least favorite thing in the world with editing. I can't stand it. I don't like it. Uh, I know there are things that you can do to make it easier. Nothing makes it easier. It sucks. I don't like it. But what I will say is that there's like a noticeable difference in user retention when you include subtitles versus when you don't. At least in YouTube land, you know, like TikTok land, YouTube land, just the digital media 
space there's uh, like it helps um so i know for the opening sequence i for sure want to include subtitles um in the video and i'm not sure if i'm just thinking right here or i'm doing something off screen <laughs> when i am recording this stuff in obs i actually have two monitors um one that's right in front of me that I'm editing on and then I have a secondary monitor to my left so if I'm ever doing something uh, that you can't see it's probably on the second monitor and I'm gonna assume it's something productive but it could be me typing in a twitch chat somewhere so <laughs> who knows who knows um, okay so it looks like I'm starting to pick out some music I know for sure that at this point in my head, what I'm thinking of doing is I, I felt like the opening clip was strong. Strong. It was a really strong opening clip. Me, or uh, Joe and Shanice, their interaction um, felt like it was really charming. It was a good opening section. And what I kind of wanted to do was lead in to a little intro montage um it's a safe thing to do it normally works well it's definitely cliche but it's cliche for a reason music and cool looking b-roll is i don't know i feel like it works so um what i'm doing right now is i'm i'm just looking for a song to use i forgot to mention this in the clip section but one of the things that I find takes the most amount of time on any given project is curating the video image, static image and music assets for that project. It, uh, it takes for me a long time to find the right song to I'm going to add in a picture to like Photoshop things, remove backgrounds. It's like the, the little things that you come to expect in videos, but that like in order to do it correctly and to do it well, for me personally, it takes a lot of time and I'm still learning what works and, and what doesn't. So I think my thought process in here was that I'm looking for something with energy. I, I feel like I could have gone two ways with the opener. We could have done like a lo-fi type of vibe, like very relaxed, open up with like a, hey, what's up, Charlotte? How are you? Or Raleigh or all that kind of stuff. Um, but I felt like for the type of footage that we had, there was going to be a good amount of montage type sequences just because like i keep saying there wasn't a lot of joe talking so the only footage that we have is of the event so to compensate um i'm going to compensate with music which i don't think you're supposed to do when it comes to filmmaking and youtube you know music shouldn't be your crutch right because anybody can just slap an instrumental and hope for the best but i wasn't sure what to do um so i think i found a song that I liked. Like there was a, a beat that I really liked. And what I did is I opened it up in Epidemic, which is what we're using right now to get our free copyright, free copyright free music. Um, wait, no, it's not free. There's a monthly subscription. I can download it for free. Joe pays for the, subs the subscription. Uh, <laughs> when you open up a song in Epidemic, it'll generate a massive list of quote unquote similar songs. So what I did is I found a sound that I kind of like open it and I'm just scrolling through some of the different sounds to see if there's anything else um, that I can get behind. And it looks like if you look at my media pool in the top left, it looks like I've already downloaded five, six. So yeah, I just got another one. So I got six songs. That's not a bad place to start. Um, and I think, I feel like I, don't grab anything more, but I could be twisted. Um, the other thing to note about this video is uh, this was a quick turnaround type of video. We filmed this on a weekend. 
I flew home, I believe Monday, and then we had to have a draft to Call of Duty by Wednesday, I think. So you can hear some of the songs. Uh, it's gonna sound kind of funky for you guys because it's two times speed, but these are some of the sounds that uh, I found in Epidemic. So um, that means kind of like a one day turnaround. So um, you can't be overly picky with what you're doing. You gotta just do the best the time that you have allowed, which is <laughs> kind of the story of this space, man. It's, <laughs> you normally don't get a lot of time to work on anything. So you kind of just gotta do the best that you can and uh, learn as much as you can and learn to go faster and to include more and like shortcuts and uh, all that stuff. So, um, looks like I got my music selection in now. Um, okay. And I'm looking for some opening B roll in here. So I know I'm going to probably swap over to B roll, uh, after that opening sequence. Ooh, yeah, that's the clip. I do a cool effect with that clip. Uh, Am I, is clip the right word I should be using? That video? That sequence? Clip. I'm just gonna keep saying clip. If it's wrong, correct me. If anybody actually makes it to this part of the video, I will be mind blown. To me, it's been 20 minutes of me just rambling. And it's late here too right now. So um, I'm kind of talking, talking quietly so I don't wake up the household. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I will be I will be seriously impressed if somebody makes it into 20 minutes and 50 seconds of the video. But you never know. You sure never know. Um okay. What am I doing? Am I just thinking? I might have stepped away. Maybe I, this is a potty break. I don't know. Um I think I know what song I'd like to use at this point though. And am I just, oh, maybe I was doing something on another monitor. And I think I'm just looking for cool sequences that I can, yeah. So there's a part where he's just like walking the street with some swagger that we can include. That's a dope shot. Josh killed the camera work, by the way. He, um, he was saying that he has not done a lot of IRL shoots besides like weddings and he did a fantastic job and the quality of stuff I think he was grabbing was dope um, like some of the out of focus to focus shots he got were sick and uh, yeah he killed it shout out Josh man that's the goat so still looking through just to see if there's like anything I can use I'm thinking, yeah, I want to use that just because it says Warzone Mobile and this video is going to say Warzone Mobile, Call of Duty Warzone Mobile. So we just want to make sure we're plugging that as much as possible. All right, fire. So I think I don't touch that opening sequence anymore after I got it subtitled. Now I'm going to go through the songs that I've downloaded figure out which one I want to open with and the things I'm looking for here are a really strong energetic punch that we can use to transition to the b-roll and for it to ease out into the opening section of the video because there is a part where Joe described he um that we'll end up getting to where Joe starts talking about hey we're in uh, Charlotte driving to Raleigh this is the video that we're doing blah 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 um, and that'll be like the first real vlog section of the video. And it looks like I got my track down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this is what we end up using. It's got like a super nasty uh, bass in it. That's really easy to work with. Anything that's got like a real punchy bass. Even if the beat is ass, um, should I say that? Should I be swearing on these? Even if the beat is bad, 
the editing to anything with like a real prominent bass or 808 or one of the big booms is super easy to edit to. So um, found that. And now I'm just, I think I'm looking for what I want to cut to. Yeah, so I'm playing the song out. I left a marker on the track. You can see it if I pan back to where we'll transition back to the video. And I think this is where I have my big brain moment. Come on, Brandon, you can do this. You can do it, get there, hold on. No, don't figure it out yet, or do I? So we, the, yeah, this clip right here is the one we use. Do I figure it out here? I'm thinking. <laughs> my, my, <gasps> nice B. The wheels were turning. So what I end up thinking about here and what I end up doing is you see these three racing stripes on the background, the red, white, and blue stripes. So I don't know if I th thought of it immediately, but in my head, I was thinking what a cool way to transition to b-roll is to um mask out each of those stripes because they're super prominent and distinct and they got really clean edges mask out each of those lines and have them fly onto the screen and then on the bass hit have it kick into the b-roll and right here i add in a riser i believe it is it's a sound effect that increases in volume to emphasize um, an upcoming moment so i add a riser in there for the sound effect and here i take my freeze frame because i just want to work with this one frame where the lines are static and I'm trying to think, do I want to do this in the fusion page or the color page? What is going to be the easiest way to mask out these three lines um, and have them slide on to the screen? Um, eventually decide that we should do it in the fusion page. Do I, Brandon, why are you so dumb? Yeah, get out of the color page. Thank you. Okay. Oh, I got you. I'm reframing it so that the blue stripe on the bottom goes all the way across the screen because I think it when it was zoomed out it was not quite on frame but I don't think it really matters all that much in the end I, who knows all right so make my duplicate again why am I get out of the color page I don't need to be in there nope nope this is done you shouldn't be doing this yep yeah, don't do it <laughs> look at me I'm thinking I'm thinking real hard about this. How do I want to do this? So, I think the reason why I start in the color page is because it's what I do when I do like door transitions. It's really easy to keyframe and animate different shapes and mask them out in the color page. Um, but I think what I'm realizing is that it's not gonna be the best way to do this effect because what I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna want to animate the actual motion of that line. Um, and I think my big head will eventually put this back in the fusion page. There we go, W, Brandon. Way to go, kid. Smart, smart. So now I can start to mask this guy out. Um, adding a polygon node and I'm not connecting it yet to the media so I can still see the video but I drew a pretty good outline of that shape adding a little soft edge to help with the hardness of it and I think I spent some time playing with the look of it oh I do add a glow um, why do I add a glow node? Is it just to make it look better? I think I just add a glow node to make it look a little bit better. 
Ooh, yeah. All right. I remember thinking here, like, oh, this is cool. <laughs> like, this looks good. Ah, we're going to keep it that way. We are for sure going to keep it that way. Um, there are a couple times in here where the playback speed isn't great. And I'll do my best to cut out those moments where I'm struggling to get DaVinci to play back the clip properly. Um, okay. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to figure out where I want, when exactly I want this thing to start moving in. And again, what I'm going for is this stripe that I cut out is gonna fly onto frame. And then when the intro song drops in, I'm going to cut to the actual shot of you know, the Call of Duty Endowment Bowl with all the stripes. So, um, I think what I do now, am I starting to layer it? No, I make it a compound clip. Why do I do that? Why would I do this? Okay, interesting. Um, so I took my Fusion freeze frame and I made it a compound clip. I might have done that just because when you bring in freeze frames into the fusion page, it sometimes gets a little bit funky because what you're essentially doing is you're looking at a single frame, right? That's extended out. And I think you can have problems with that when it, oh, it is why I do that. Because what I'm gonna eventually do is, um, I'm gonna keyframe the, the motion of it uh, onto the screen. So yeah, that is definitely what I do. Um, so I make it a compound clip. And when you do that, it converts it into a um, media file with actual frames to it instead of a singular frame. So you can, do some animation and do some keyframe work. Okay, so I do the same thing, but in compound click land, uh, got my stripe all masked out. And what I'm gonna start to do, okay, I'm on my transform node. So I'm gonna make the animation that has it slide on screen. So I, I've keyframed where I want it to start and where I would like it to end. And I jump back to my frame where it's starting and I dragged it off screen. And I'm going to, uh, yeah, I'm going to the end and I'm dragging it a little bit past where I'd like it to start because I, I kind of want like a little whipping animation, you know? Right, so here we go, it's playing it flies on screen and then kind of bounces back. And I think I'm cut, uh, yeah, it looks like I'm happy with how that looks. So go into my spline um, window and add curves to it. You can do that by selecting everything, with control A and then hitting S to add some splines to that sucker. And I add some motion blur. This is where I think I have some playback issues, but I think that looks pretty good, yeah. So I, I was happy with how that looks. I'm framing it forward frame by frame. And what I'm now gonna do is I'm going to move my polygon so that it grabs the other stripe. So next one is white. Go and do that and the nice thing about duplicating this and doing this in the fusion page is all of my keyframes and everything transferred over. So I really, all I had to do was, oh, that looks so good. Um, all I really had to do was move my masking rectangle polygon type B. So that's what I did. Uh, now I do it on the red one 
and I'm staggering them as well on the timeline. So when I go back to the timeline, you'll notice that um, they don't play all at the same time. There's kind of like a stair fall effect to it. And I just move it, the, uh, the media a little bit to the right on the timeline to give that kind of effect. W. Oh, I remember being really happy with how this looked at first glance. Cause I was like, oh, it, a lot of times when you go to do different effects, it does not look how you envision. Like you have an idea of what you want it to look like and um, all that stuff. And <laughs> when it comes down to time to actually do it, it just, it looks like dookie. So this one I think looked pretty good. And I'm spending some time fine tuning it. Um, I really want this to look good. Uh, this video in, in general, I remember thinking like I really wanted to do a good job in this video because it's gonna be a sponsored video and it's a vlog type of video. And when people watch vlog type um, videos or IRL type content, I, I feel like it's really easy to tell when a video is um, kind of amateur-ishly made. And when you start doing quote unquote effects, right? Like basic level effects, it's really easy to fall into that land where your stuff looks hokey. It doesn't look good. And it looks like you don't know what you're doing. So <laughs> we're trying to hide that as much as possible. Um, okay. Oh, okay. So I do spend a good bit of time on this effect. You know, we've been talking about the three stripe thing for a little while, um, which I, I, is not untypical, untypical, untypical. Is that a right? Is that a word? It's not, uh, it's not atypical. I think that's the word I'm looking for. It's not maybe. It's not uncommon for something like this. You know, when it's a new-ish thing that you're doing, there's a, a learning process and curve to figure out what works and what doesn't work well. So you can see right now, I'm messing with some different shots of this effect. Like I'm adding some noise to see if that adds anything into it. And I'm adding some ripple to kind of distort it. In my head, what I'm thinking is I would like for there to be some kind of distortion or um, blowout or warping of this logo when the beat kicks in. Um, because what happens is there's a lot of motion with these stripes coming in. And if you just cut to the logo, it's a little anti clem climactic so i'm trying to think of a good way to blend the stripes coming in with um starting the b-roll sequence like the b-roll montage and i think i knew that i wanted to do a little bit of distortion and i'm i'm gonna call it like lens distortion my vernacular is not good when it comes to editing so i'm sorry if i'm using the wrong words um so that's what i had that ripple note in there and then i think what i wanted to do was oh there's the lens distortion okay that's this is when i start doing um like the little blowout effect i wanted to add some kind of glitchiness to it you know some like digitization that's a good word Digitization. Let really me just bust that one out of my asshole. Digitization. I really wanted to, yeah, like add something to where it felt like, you know, it was rendering, right? So these stripes come in and then like your logo kind of renders on screen. So I'm still plugging away with it and I. 
okay, I'm figuring out where I want that effect to stop, right? I'm, I'm playing this song and thinking about, okay, how, what is a good point for me to cut back to the actual footage? And I think that's why I leave that marker there. All right, so now we hopping back in the Fusion page and what I'm gonna do, I think is I'm gonna hop to that marker in the edit page and then hop back into the Fusion page. And I'm gonna use that as my reference point for the final keyframe of what I'm doing. So what you'll see me do is I'm jumping to that frame that I marked in the edit page and I'm making that my ending frame and then I'm going to the beginning and adding the blowout of this logo, right? So I'm increasing that distortion, zooming in with transform and I have ripples going on. I feel like I delete the ripples later that or they're just really unnoticeable um but there's like yeah there's like nose nose this noise node that we have that i use as well that and i feel like i probably could take it out um later on but it's there it is what it is um and then i'm adding some motion blur to this uh, just because i feel like i don't know i motion blur just makes it look good so it's really hard on um, render time, but I just feel like motion blur looks really, really, really good when you, you include it. And this is definitely when I start having playback issues because I have these three clips that are all sliding on with motion blur. And then I have this logo that I'm trying to animate that, yeah, so actually I render it out to see if it looks any decent. Um, and then I have the logo that's animating with motion blur as well. You can you can render in your um, timeline, and I think that's what I ended up doing, but I forgot that you could do that uh, at this moment. All right, so that renders out. I play it, and I'm just seeing how it looks. I feel like it looks good. I think what I decide is that the stripes move in too slow, and I think I speed up that process. But I think it looks good. Right? What do we do here, Brandon? Yeah. So I, I speed in, speed up the animation of the stripies. And what I think I'm gonna do is through the rest of this sequence, um, I'm cleaning up this animation. So I think I'm gonna skip forward until I have it the way I like it. Hold on. All right, so I was skipping forward and this is what I ended up doing. So I was having a lot of playback issues and I think it was because I was using this 4K footage from Josh, right? I'm trying to apply these effects to it. So um, at one point I give up on making it work in DaVinci and I generate proxy media and optimized media. I think I ended up using the optimized media instead of the proxy media because I was having issues with the proxy. But um, if you didn't know, you can right click on any of your video files and hit generate optimized media and it will definitely help with playback speed. But anyways, let me jump forward until there's a spot where I'm back to editing. All right, so I ended up rendering that whole logo animation sequence into one clip, which is now that green clip right there. Or the, um, excuse me, the blue, right? So I made it all into one compound clip and rendered it uh, so that it's now played back smoothly. My time. So yeah, that section was done. And now what I'm doing is I'm looking for the next thing to transition to. And I saw this clip and I thought, you know what would be cool is I know how to mask out people. Maybe I should mask them out and have them slide onto the frame. So that's what I do. Make a freeze frame there, make it a compound clip so we can do some masking and animating. And DaVinci just added their magic mask to the fusion page. And this is my first time using it and it worked awesome. Um, I've only used it in the color page and I've had 
some success with it in the color page. I feel like I don't use it correctly, but here you see, I just draw like a general squiggle and pff, works perfect, right? Do a red line to get rid of it. I mean, and that's about as easy as it's gonna get, right? Um, do I do some fine tuning? You're fine, Brandon, it, it looks fine. Fire, that looks so good. Um, so do my mask and then I let it track the mask through the whole freeze frame in here, which is what it's doing. It's tracking the mask to the beginning of the compound clip. Um, and what I'm gonna do after that happens is do I nest it again into another compound clip? No, add a transform node here. And I'm going to animate it coming on screen and then I add some motion blur so that it looks pretty. No motion blur. Yep, spline, love a good spline, bam. So when you play it, it slides onto the, the frame, which is cool. See, look, slides on the frame. Joan, uh, man number two. <laughs> and we use it as our transition point. So there's the cool stripes that slide and then that guy slides on the um, frame. I think I have to go back and retrack it because there was issues, but. Um, from here, I think I just start picking out the rest of the videos that I'm going to use for this montage section. And I'm just, I want to, I wish I could say I had like a rhyme or reason, but I'm just looking for stuff that looks cool and stuff that I can have ideas to do with. Like for instance, the rear mirror, um, I think I use that to continue the theme of what we're doing. So one of the few things that I know how to do when it comes to editing is to mask out stuff. It's, um, I'm not the, I'm not amazing at it, but I just, I know how to do it. And so when I can use it and use it well, I tend to, it's kind of a crutch of mine. So we have this theme, right, of things kind of sliding on to frame that have been cut out. So there's the stripes and Joe and um, the guy. And I think what I do here is I use the window and I mask out what's inside the window and transition to what's in, in there as well. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I don't know if I do it right here or not. Um, but all I'm doing while I'm going through here is I'm just looking for things that I feel like are cool, um, that add to the opening section, right? That kind of encapsulate the, the video, right? We're in Raleigh, it's for COD Mobile. What are we gonna be doing? What is Joe gonna be doing? Like, what are things that are interesting about this video that we could show off to get people engaged? So that's all I'm doing and uh, the song that we use in the background is really easy to sing to. A lot of bass hits that you can use. And um, that's what I'm doing. I'm just cutting it on those hits and figuring out what works best and what doesn't. So we're at 47 minutes of me talking. Has anybody made it to this point? You have. If you, if anybody has made it to... 48 minutes of me talking about editing in DaVinci Resolve. Can you, can you comment, I want my brownie points and I will award you 200 whole brownie points. You heard me right, 200 brownie points. That's nothing to scoff at. So here's what, yeah, here's what I'm talking about. Um, this time I do it in the color page because that's what I'm more familiar with. Uh, I am just outlining this window. I'm using my good old window tool, making some polygons, some splines, 
you know, the dang vibes. Um, yeah. Fun fact for anybody who's newer to this page, if you hold control when you're moving your spline handles, you will move one individually. And if you hold shift, it moves them together. All right, fire. So that looks good. And I think I now track it. Yeah. So you could, oh, I got the yawn, excuse me. So you could track it in fusion, but sometimes it is just faster to do it by hand. And that's what I do. So um, in the color page, I think I just go, yeah, I go frame by frame and I just make this window fit the mirror. As good as I can. A lot of times stuff like this happens so fast that it really doesn't have to be exact. There's moments where it matters, where it, it's super noticeable and um, there's like a crispness to, it, crispness to it that looks weird. But for this one, I, I don't think it matters all that much. I, I think I have a soft edge on that window. And um, yeah, I'm just making sure it someone lines up. And we're gonna use that as the next transition to the next scene. And what do I do here? I think I'm. I know that I want to zoom in to the next scene, like zoom in through the window. And I th think I'm gonna use a transform effect, yes. Okay, so that's what I do. I'm turning, I nest the mask into a compound clip and then uh, there's actually a transform effect that I'm not sure if everybody knows about. Um, the cool thing about the transform effect is that you can apply motion blur to any keyframe changes in position or zoom that you would normally do on the inspector page of the clip. Um, so it's, it's pretty useful. I like it. And now we've got a solid little opening sequence, right? So we've got the logo, boom, 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 go to the person, all that stuff. And from here, I'm just gonna go through, I don't think I add any more cool transitions. I think at this point I'm tired. <laughs> like we've been, we've been editing this thing for a couple hours at this point and we're only, only 20 seconds, 26 seconds into the video. So <laughs> I'm like, all right, let's just find some good clips that look good and, um, Get, get out of this opening B-roll sequence. It's, it's time. It's about that dang time. Um, if you have made it this far, maybe you have me on in the background. I don't know. I feel like, I feel like maybe you would jump to this section of the video. I find it hard to believe that anybody would actually watch and listen to me for 50 minutes. But if you have, um, if you have any questions about this video, let me know. I would be happy to answer them. Or maybe I can ask you a question. What is something that you've been doing with your edits that you feel like I could incorporate into my videos? Because I would love to learn. I sure would. Got a little water. Um, okay. So I think now I've got a good selection of clips and it ends on kind of a reverby fade out. And I think the last clip I used, Joe is about to say something. And it's kind of like a little cliffhanger, you know? 
it's like energy energy shots whoa driving locations fans all that stuff and then we end when joe's about to say something hopefully the viewer is curious about what he's gonna say I don't know. another question for you guys how many times do you how many times do you play back a sequence until you're happy with it because good lord i feel like i play back my stuff way too often i don't know if it's like a um not narcolepsy what's the what is the word when you're in love with yourself i don't know it's because i like i just want to be proud of the stuff that i put together or what but man i'll be playing that stuff back all the time oh uh, okay so there's like there was a section in that sequence where it felt kind of slow you can see it on the timeline there's <clears throat> The clip on track one that I replaced right now, it's a little long, and then there's that teal clip a little further down that I think I shortened as well. Just because they're, uh, didn't fit with the page of the opening section. Yeah, so I think I do the same thing in here, right? Yeah. Cause... Oh, I do add another effect. So the you can see on the timeline on that track one, there's kind of like an even pacing to that this B-roll montage, right? And there's this longer section here that I'm working on right now. And I think there's some kind of riser or distortion or build up for the next beat drop. And what I'm doing is I'm gonna add some interference and I'm gonna, I think, fade it on. So I'm gonna fade on the effect so that when, as it's building up, the, the, the amount of like distortion and damage to the video increases. I think is what I do. Is that what I do? Let's see. Yeah, I'm adding like film damage and um, I didn't like that. Or do I fade it off? No, I fade it on. Yeah, so you can see that it builds up with this like blurring distortion for the next hit in the song. Hm. Ooh, excuse me. I got hiccups now? I don't know. This is something I do um, throughout any of the sound design that I do. The da Vinci does not have a drag on audio ender plugin. I think Premiere does. So this is the workaround to it. You make a separate compound clip, extend it out, and add some reverb to that compound clip so that it can play out through the end of the clip. Um, there's probably better ways to end audio. This is just the one that I know. And again, I just felt like I didn't want to spend time learning something new for this particular thing. Maybe on the next project I can look more into switching on how I want to edit end songs and stuff but this is the one that I know and right now I'm just playing with how it sounds I'm playing with the reverb and where it's located and, and all that but this is the b-roll opening um, and yeah I think it came out pretty good so we're at 57 minutes in this video um, I'll probably leave a comment or do something outside this video because I, I would be surprised if anybody made it to this point but um, I think I'm gonna close off my talking portion here because what I'm gonna do is um, basically go through the rest of the video which is yeah, it's going to take a good amount of time, but right, so this opening seconds. sequence, I would say, took a good third of the process. And that's just the opening 30 seconds of the video. So, um, if you would like me to talk through the rest of the video, I certainly can. If you made it to this part of the video, please let me know. Um, yeah, 
I'm not, I'm curious as to how this went. Uh, <laughs> would it be better if I just uploaded the whole thing and just did like some lo-fi to it? Um, I certainly can upload the rest of the edit for you guys to peep. You know, I can do an unlisted version where it's just the, uh, the whole edit uncut. Uh, you guys can definitely let me know, but from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to transition to Joe talking. We're going to do Joe talking. We're going to start building the story and um, go through his day. Hopefully, we've hooked the viewer's attention, and now it's our job to tell the story. So that's going to be the next step. We tell a story, and then we edit the gameplay, and then we close up the video. Um, but if you guys found this useful, if you made it to the end, definitely let me know. Uh, I appreciate you guys, and uh, I hope you have a good day. Peace.